This is the iPhone 15 Pro. It took some time and real world usage to draw my impressions about it. So without further ado, let's dive in. What's new on the iPhone 15 Pro? It now has a prime titanium finish, which looks especially gorgeous in its natural color. The long-awaited Type-C port is here, which finally bridges the gap between worlds. There is now a bond with the Android users that can now lend a charger when it's needed. Another notable change is the action button, as the silent mode switch is now gone. In the heart there is a new A17 Pro chipset, which gets a new name, as well as many other features and improvements across the board. So let's talk more about the design. There are four color options to choose from, but the natural one looks really elegant and distinct. The titanium addition actually just covers the outer layer of the frame, which then transitions to aluminum inside with a special binding process. This design change has trimmed down the weight by about 19 grams, but in hand it actually feels even lighter. The use of such premium materials is a good direction for the premium smartphone segment. And the trend is already catching on, as rumors show that the next S24 Ultra will likely have a titanium frame as well. One of the most iconic things about iPhone has changed, the silent mode switch. Instead you get a clickable button that you can assign with different functions. Like toggle for the old silent mode, or focus mode, a camera shortcut, quick torch, instant voice memo, and so on. But probably the coolest thing is that you can also assign any Siri shortcut to it. It is quite a big move from Apple. But for now this change affects only the Pro models. So, is it actually practical? I found it quite hard to reach when using shortcuts that require the button to be pressed more often. It just does not feel in the right place. Other than that you will notice that design has not changed much from the iPhone 14 Pro. Except, of course, for the new port. Which brings us to the hardware. iPhone 15 Pro features a USB 3 capable Type-C port. This means that you get much faster wired data transfer speeds. But for this you will need to get a high-speed data cable, because the included one only supports regular USB 2.0 speeds and is mostly meant just for charging. And just like on iPad, you can now use different kinds of USB-C devices with the iPhone. This can be an external display, a mouse, a keyboard, wired internet connection, or even all of them at once, with the help of USB Type-C hub. Shout out to Baseus for sending me this. Reverse wired charging is also possible with other phones, but you may find it more useful to charge your earbuds as it is capped to 4.5 watts. All of this is a part of the new A17 Pro chipset, which has also moved from a 4 nanometer to a 3 nanometer process, meaning better power efficiency, which goes together great with the fact that the battery has also gained a slight increase in capacity. With the improved chipset, Apple has also advertised how powerful the graphics on the iPhone 15 Pro are now, with the added ray tracing and a promise of being able to play AAA titles like Assassin's Creed Mirage upon launch in 2024. However, not everything is perfect here. The iPhone 15 lineup had many issues on launch. I also experienced the most common ones like overheating and occasional system freezes to a point where you cannot even unlock the screen. There have been many updates addressing these issues, which bumps the iOS version to 17.2.1, and no issues have been experienced ever since. The battery life so far has been great, as you would expect from an iPhone. It will easily get you through the day, and you might even remember to charge it somewhere in the middle of the next one. The camera hardware however seems to remain unchanged from the previous model. When looking at the specs, they are identical. Only the iPhone 15 Pro Max is getting an upgraded 5x telephoto camera. Instead, a lot of new features in the camera experience are coming from the software side while at the same time utilizing the new neural processing improvements on the A17 Pro chipset. The cameras are great, and the shots from the iPhone 15 Pro are beautiful. I tested the performance in different lighting conditions, and the shots turned out pretty good. You can also see these camera samples on my Instagram, in the description. 
There were some darker, long exposure scenes on which the iPhone failed to sustain sharpness, but this could be like 1% of the time and was not a major problem. With the new iOS feature, you can change the focus subject on portrait photos. This also works with shots taken on older iPhones and can be edited on Mac and iPad as well. But with the iPhone 15 lineup, it is possible to turn regular photos into portraits if a person or a pet was recognized by the neural engine, which as you can see, is not always the case. With the addition of Type-C port, Apple ProRes video footage can now also be recorded to an external USB drive. The drive must be formatted in either XFAT or APFS file formats to be compatible. Another new feature in the camera experience is that you get to choose the default focal length when starting the camera app. This can be adjusted in the camera settings. It is hard to call this a huge upgrade over the previous generation, but it definitely is a general refinement for the iPhone. Apple also took the experimental route by changing something that is more of a marketing than useful. Personally, coming from an iPhone 11 Pro, this was a huge upgrade, and for many people still being on older iPhone generations, you will probably feel the same way. Next year will likely follow the same routine, so if you were waiting out for an upgrade, then this one is probably for you, because now featuring a Type-C port, it is definitely the most complete iPhone yet.